Amen. Amen. I welcome everyone, especially by the grace of God tonight. I'm trusting that this night, the Lord will reach out to us as we enter into covenant with him, a covenant of divine rest, a covenant of his mercy, a covenant that is predicated on the blood of Jesus. It's a covenant that cannot be broken because the immortality of God is imputed into it. It. And as we take the Holy Communion today, I pray that God will push every one of us into that covenant in the name of Jesus. Amen. So Amen. we are going to pray very briefly. I have some um, testimonies here that have come in, but we have a long night. Uh, some of them came as a voicemail. So I think um, let's hear them next time. Uh, let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, Amen. I thank you because you are a merciful father. I thank you because you are the God who has done all things for us. There is no other God like unto you. We thank you, Father, Lord, for bringing us this far in this year, 2022. Ah, Father, we are thankful. We appreciate you from the depths of our hearts. With all of our spirit, soul, and body, we return the praise and glory to you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Father, tonight, we pray that there will be signs and wonders. Amen. Tonight, touch your people, not Amen. by power, nor by might. But by my spirit, said the Lord. Therefore, Lord, I pray that the Holy Ghost, Father, Lord, will reach out to every brother, every sister, wherever anyone is. Father, Lord, under the sound of my voice, Father, touch them tonight in the name of Jesus. Amen. By your mercy and by your goodness, let it rub off on everyone. And Amen. push us into that rest, Father, Lord, that we have desired. Thank you, Father, because it is done. Much more than a man can speak. Holy Ghost, I pray, you will take these words, make them eternal words in our hearts. Father, let everything I say be inspired from your truth. Thank you, Lord, because it is done. In Jesus' mighty name we are prayed. Amen. 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 Please, I want to uh, plead with us. If you have a family, you have a friend, that you would like to be blessed, uh, please send them the link. Remember, share the link with someone either on the YouTube or on the Zoom, please share the link and let them know that God is blessing his people already now. So we are going to run very, very fast tonight because we have our Holy Communion. So I'm going to do a quick charge. In the midst of the charge, uh, the way I want us to do it tonight, I'm going to say some things I would like us to pray. And, uh, and then, but let's see how it goes. I really want us to pray. But if we don't do the prayer the way, I desire that we should do it. Just be out with me. Let's flow with the Holy Spirit. And then we'll also, we'll also do the Lord's Supper. So please get your emblems, your Lord's Supper emblems by, by your side. So that when we call for it, we'll do that. And then uh, tonight as well, I want to lead us to enter, to make a covenant confession, to make a covenant statement with God. And as we do that covenant statement, the Lord will push you into his covenant of divine rest in the mighty name of Jesus. So when Amen. we also get to that point, I would like all of us to cooperate. It's a night that is loaded with the presence and with the power of God. And I trust God that God will visit you wherever you are in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. All right. I'm going to read very quickly uh, two or three verses of the scriptures. Uh, please invite someone, invite someone, invite someone. Uh, be a good Samaritan, invite someone. Be a good neighbor, invite someone. And the Lord is going to bless you. Joshua chapter 21, verse 44. In Joshua chapter 21, verse 44. And the Lord gave them rest round about. You know, we have read these scriptures over and over during our midnight battle cry. But there's something that we didn't really discuss. And that is what I want to bring out this evening. And the Lord gave them rest round about. Why? Look at the next statement. Why did God give them rest round about? According to all that he swear unto their fathers. According to all that he swear unto their fathers. In other words, God gave them rest round about. Not because Israel deserved the rest. 
Not because Israel was obedient to his word. Not because Israel did anything to enter into that rest. No. God gave them rest round about according to what he has sworn to their fathers. In other words, God gave them rest round about because of the covenant of rest he had with their fathers. Because of the covenant God had with their fathers. If you meditate on this thing very well, I would like us to pray some prayers. Well, we start, some of us started uh, leading, uh, uh, praying this prayer some time ago. And last night, our team, some of our team members also prayed the same prayer. I would like you to pray for yourself at some point. Say, Lord, I want you to enter into a personal, particular covenant with me. Because a generation is, pass, is passing. Generations have passed by. We are our own present time in our own present generation. After our generation, our children are coming. You need to hand over something to them. You need to hand over something to your own children. There must be something that you have received from God that you need to hand over to the next generation. Israel, in Joshua chapter 21, verse 44, they enjoyed rest round about because their parents, their forefathers, handed over a covenant that they made with the Almighty God to them, that when they come into that land, the Lord, because of the covenant they swear with their fathers, is going to give them rest round about. And then if you continue reading, he said, and there stood not a man of all their enemies before them. The Lord their God delivered them from all their enemies. The Lord delivered all their enemies into their hands. The Lord delivered all their enemies into their hands. What is that telling us? That is telling us that as a result of the covenant God had with their fathers, God delivered all their enemies into their hand and gave them rest round about. The Lord gave them rest on every side. All their enemies were conquered. Why? According to all that God swore unto their fathers. Be a child of God with a covenant. Be a woman of God with a covenant. Be a man of God with a covenant. Let there be something that is backing you up so that you will be able to hand over something to the next generation. Okay, let's even forget now, temporarily. Let's, talk, let's not talk about the next generation. Let's talk of our own lives. Let's talk of our own selves. We are talking of the covenant of divine rest. Why is it today? In Genesis chapter 8, verse 4. In Genesis chapter 8, verse 4. The Bible said, and the ark rested on the seventh month. We are in the seventh month of July. The ark rested on the seventh month. On the 17th day of the month, hallelujah. Today is 17th of July. So we are on the 7th month of the year. We are on the 17th day of the month. And the Bible said the ark rested on the mountain of Ararat. Today, God is bringing the ark of rest into your life, into your family, in the name of Jesus. Amen. I said the Lord is bringing the ark of rest into your destiny. On that matter, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Before this time, Noah has been in the flood. The flood has been on the earth. And what is the characteristic of the flood? Restlessness. What is the characteristic of the flood? Pain. Laboring without results. Making efforts with no effect. People are dying. People are perishing. There was hunger. There was fear in the land. The flood was growing. There was a storm. Animals were dying. It affected animals. It affected human beings. It affected plants. Some perished. Every human being was cut off. But on the 17th day of the seventh month, the ark rested. And God brought rest on a stormy world. And Noah and his family got a deserved rest. Today, it is 17th day. In the month of July, the seventh month of the year, surely the Lord is bringing rest into someone's life tonight in the mighty name of Jesus. So because we believe it and we are entering into that covenant of rest, like Noah did, Noah entered into that covenant and God smelled his sweet savor 
today through the covenant that is in Christ, we too will enter into divine and mighty rest in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. So it's important that you have a covenant, that you live by covenant. Why? Because your covenant, I know all of us, there's no need defining what covenant is. I know we have studied this before. Many people know it, what a covenant is. So let's just forget about definition and explanation. But in Psalm 89, in Psalm 89, verse 33 to 35, I like those verses there. It said, nevertheless, my loving kindness will I not utterly take away from him, nor suffer my faithfulness to fail. Why? Because my covenant will I not break, nor alter the thing that is gone out of my lips. God will never break his covenant. When he has entered a covenant with you, that covenant is unbreakable. Let me give us a testimony. Many years ago, I think that was in 2005, in 2004, 2005, I saw people that, no, before 2005, 2000, I think that was in, 19, in 1992, 1993, I saw people dying. I was in an occasion during a riot. I think that was during the uh, uh, a political restlessness, restive season that took place in Nigeria at that time. People were dying because the election was annulled. Everybody, everybody, nobody was happy. There was a riot that took place. I was in the midst of that riot. As a young boy, I went by the way, by the roadside where we lived. There was mass, massive, a lot of people that were on the road. From nowhere, a taxi driver drove and crushed everybody that was on that it was in my very presence. I saw people dying like chicken. I saw things that I've never seen in my life. And I don't. I, I pray I will never see it again. I saw people littered everywhere. They were people that I just spoke to. People that were just protesting together. People that were just talking with. I saw them die in my very presence. That thing left a mark in my heart. I was like, it is so easy to die. We are between life and death. The next step could mean death. I made a vow in my heart that if there's anything that will help me so that I will not die. The way other people have died, just in my presence, Father, help me. I started praying. I started thinking about it. Finally, in 2005, I learned and I studied about covenants. And I entered into a covenant of health into a covenant of long life with God. And anybody that enters into my arena, that covenant, that umbrella covenant covers them. So when I was going to get married, my wife became, well, she was very sick, very, very sick. She was always going to the clinic. She was always going to the hospital. She was always being admitted in the hospital. It was, and we're back getting married, we're in courtship. So the thing gave me a lot of concern. Because she was spending money a lot and she was in pain. She was, I was like, God, how is this happening? Why must this be taking place at this time uh, when we are about to get married? And then eventually, by the grace of God, I told her that I've entered into a covenant of health and long life with God. And that because I've entered into that covenant, as she enters into my life, that covenant is going to rub off on her. She said, Amen. The day we got married, that day, she entered into that covenant with me. Since that day till now, until eternity, she has never again been admitted in any hospital. No. That was the end of the infirmity. That was the end of the sickness. Why? Because you got married to a man that had a covenant of health with God. Tonight, we are going to enter into a covenant of divine rest. That same covenant will rub off on you. God will give you rest. It's not like covenant. It's not, uh, it's not that when you enter into covenant, there will be no crisis. No. You can still experience crisis, but God will exempt you. Because of his covenant on your head, God will exempt you from the crisis of life. God will give you the spirit and the power and the grace of exemption. Jesus was in the boat when the storm was taking place. But what happened? He was resting. He was sleeping. He knew he would not die in the storm. He knew he was going over to the other side. 
He knew where he was going to die was on the cross. He had a covenant that had been written before he was born concerning him. He has entered into that covenant. So why the disciples were afraid? He knew he had the covenant with God. He knew he had the covenant with divinity. And that thing shielded him. So when they woke him up, they owe him men of little faith. And then he stilled the storm. Dare to be a man of a covenant. And the covenant of God, when it lands upon you and when it covers you, your life is shielded and is protected. And that is what God is going to do tonight in the name of Jesus. There is a Amen. covenant realm. There is a covenant realm that is higher than just quoting of promises. Yes, we have the promises of God. Promises of God are there for us in the Bible. But covenants are higher than promises. An example in the Bible, I meditated on it, and I had an example in the Bible. An example in the Bible is Jehu. Remember Jehu? Jehu was the one who killed Jezebel. Jehu was the, Jehu was the one who got anointed, and he drove as a furious rider. Jehu was the person who cut down the idols of um, Jezebel and overthrew all the witchcraft and the soothsayers and all the wickedness that Ahab and Jezebel did in the land of Israel. Jehu was anointed to destroy those things. When Jehu, in his zeal to serve the Lord, in his zeal, he was committed to uproot all those wickedness and witchcraft. After he did it, God gave him a covenant. And God told him that because we have performed this, and you did it according to my word. I enter a covenant with you that your children, your children, children, up to the fourth generation will be on the throne of Israel. And that was exactly what happened to Jehu. Even when he was not, even when he backslid, and he, uh, even when he backslid, he didn't really do well again. That covenant still stood for him. His children, 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 up to the fourth generation, they occupied the throne of Israel. Even when people wanted to overthrow them, people were not happy with them. People may quote Joe, but because it was a man that is carrying a covenant, there was nothing anybody could do, but his children must be on the throne. That is the power of covenant. If you can enter into a covenant with God, no matter the situation, no matter what is happening, God is bound by his integrity and by the integrity and the faithfulness of his throne. God is bound to protect you. God is bound to fulfill his word concerning you. That's why I read where we read now. Where he said, my covenant will I not break. Neither will I alter that which has gone out of my mouth. He said, I have sworn to David by my holiness that I will never lie unto David. That his seed will endure forever. My loving kindness and faithfulness will endure and it will abide and it will never fail him. What a God we serve. Dear to enter into a covenant relationship with God. You will never regret it and you will enjoy for the rest of your life. I pray that today the Lord will lead you. The Lord will help us to understand this and you enter into that covenant in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Covenant, covenant, covenant is what determines color in life. Your color in life and ministry, your color in life and destiny is determined by your covenant work with God. It is decided by the covenant relationship you have with God. Noah was a man that understood this. That was why after the flood, he entered into a covenant relationship with God. And what happened? It brought color into his life. It brought color upon the earth. And today we are talking of the seven rainbows, seven colors of the rainbow. That thing happened because a man entered into a covenant relationship with God. And not only on this earth, in heaven as well, before the throne of God in heaven, the rainbow, the Bible said, is also there. Why? Because a man entered into a covenant relationship with God. That is telling you something, that any covenant you enter on earth with God is registered in his throne in heaven. That God, that covenant is always before him, that my son, you may you mention your name. My son has entered into a covenant with me unto his next generation. All his children are bound by this covenant. If other people, things are happening to them, no, this one is my son. Because of the covenant I have with him, his children are covered. Your family is covered. So tonight, I want us to enter into those covenants that is going to speak 
even after that you are gone. Transgenerational covenant that will make things happen in our life. Your covenant will bring a covering in your life. It was what covered Isaac. After Abraham entered into covenant relationship with God, he died. That covenant was extended to Isaac. It lighted upon Jacob. And it festered and extended to all of Israel. And today, all of Israel is enjoying the covenant covering that their parents made. Ah, today, enter into a covenant with God. Be a man of covenant. Be a child of covenant. Be a I was telling some of my people that are very close to me. I said, personally, I have never failed any interview. I have never failed an interview. Because when I go for an interview, even if I don't do well, they will call me. I'm telling you, even if I don't do well, I have rejected jobs. Even if they don't call me, even if they don't like me, or I didn't do well, somehow they will still call me. Why? I go there with a covenant. There are covenants you have entered into that are bound by the integrity of God. Say, Lord, I am going there and I know I cannot fail because the God who owns the heavens and the earth is the judge and he's the one sitting as judge over the, over the interview. And because of the covenant I have made with you, Lord, go with me. I had situations where I knew I didn't do well. Yet, by the mercies of God, but because of covenants, they will still have mercy and they will still call you and tell you, okay, come, we we'll give you that job. Promises, you can get them by prayer and fasting, but covenants are sealed by blood and by sacrifice. They are secured upon the altar. That's why Jesus died. Tonight, that's why we are going to take a communion that is sealed by the blood of Jesus and by his body upon the altar of sacrifice, upon the altar of Calvary, as you come with all your heart, and you trust God, that what God has done for our fathers, what he has done for other people, God is willing to enter into a covenant work with you. As you enter into that covenant relationship, you do your part. God is bound by his faithfulness, by his holiness. His part can never fail. And you begin to see things happening in your life. You begin to see changes happening around you. Delays will be broken. What swallows other people will not swallow you. And you begin to make progress in life and destiny. So shall it be in our lives in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Very wonderful. So I believe I've spoken a lot now about covenants. Um, there are a lot of other things I would have loved to say concerning covenant, but we don't need it because I want us to pray. And I want us to enter into a covenant work with God, starting from this night. I'm going to read Hebrews chapter 12. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 24. The Bible said unto Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant, and to the blood of sprinkling that speaketh better things than that of Abel. That speaketh better things than that of Abel. The covenant work we have with God or the platform of our New Testament relationship with God is also on the basis of God's covenant. It's on the basis of the covenant that we have through the death of Jesus. The Bible says he's the great shepherd of the sheep. Through the blood of the everlasting covenant, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do this, working in you that which is well pleasing is through Christ Jesus. Jesus has paid the price. He has shed his blood. And through that blood of the everlasting covenant, we have a New Testament relationship that our fathers did not have. So the covenant we are entering into today is a new and a better covenant that is predicated on the death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Powerful testimonies, powerful things. So we have a better opportunity to possess and to enter into the rest that our forefathers did not enter. The covenant work we have with God is the highest relationship that any mortal man can have with the mortal God. It is such a work that is higher than the promises that we obtain through prayer and fasting. The work of the covenant is activated through the blood of Jesus and by sacrifice on the cross. The covenant reaches from generation to generation. It's a perpetuation. Remember the covenant of David with Jonathan. After Jonathan died, 
the covenant he had with him perpetuated unto the life of Mephibosheth. That was, that, that, that was what was on Abraham that came upon Isaac. It remained on Jacob, even when Abraham and Isaac had died. And before Jacob died, they transferred it to all his children and he expanded it in the land of Israel. That is the power of covenant. Today, many of us will enter into that covenant in the name of Jesus. Amen. If you a man that is without covenant, you will suffer what ordinary people suffer. Because the covenant of God is what brings the help of God beyond the ordinary. It gives you the help of God beyond the ordinary. We are others are talk, talking of lack because of the covenant that covers you. Like it covered Jacob, like it covered Isaac, that when there was famine everywhere, because of that covenant, God told him, stay in this land. So you are going to reap. And that was exactly what happened. I can share personal testimonies with us, but we don't need it. I want you to, to enter into that blessed covenant with God. You are going to see changes in your life. You begin to walk. I, do you know, sometimes when I'm going to get sick, I will see myself in the dream giving medicine. Once I get that medicine, sometimes it's tablets. Once I get that medicine and I take it in the dream, I knew there's a sickness that is coming that has just been averted. Many of the times, many of the times, after two or three days, I will feel the sickness come. A day later, everything will disappear. Why? Because somebody has entered a covenant of rest with God, a covenant of health with God. And that is what God wants to bring you into today. Enter into his divine rest. Jesus is calling us. Say, come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden. And I, the one alone who has rest, I, in me is rest. Say, I will give you rest. I will give you rest. But you need to come. You need to take his yoke upon you. You need to learn of him because he's weak and he's slowly in heart. And he will give us rest in the name of Jesus. Amen. Okay, rest, rest. When we talk about rest, rest is your final destination in God. Rest is the splendor of a fulfilled purpose. It is the glamour of an accomplished vision. If God has ever given you vision, and you are complete and you are, you are fresh. Everywhere is green grass. It is the product of someone's potential that has been maximized. Rest of God is the place of our covenant placement in God. That is where God has placed you. When you are in a covenant relationship with God, you are in rest. There are certain battles that you must win if you must enter into God's rest. There are two of them that I want us to pray about tonight. If you must enter into God's rest, there are two of them. Number one is the battle against prayerlessness. It is one of the major disasters of our present-day Christianity. God is angry with those that are prayerless. In Psalm 79, verse 6, Psalm 79, verse 6, the Bible says, Pour out thy rocks upon the hidden that do not know you, and upon the kingdom that have not called upon your name. In other words, pour out your rod upon the kingdom and upon the people who are, do not and who do not call upon your name. God is waiting for us to call upon him. Jesus said, men ought always to pray and not to faint. If you are not praying, you are fainting. If you are not praying, it is a sin because he said, pray with that sin. Call unto me and I will answer you. If you are not obeying those commands that you are not praying or you are prayerless, the Bible said, God will pour out his fury upon the kingdoms upon the nations that do not come. In fact, in Jeremiah chapter 10, verse 25, here, because uh, the, the prophet was praying out, he said, pour out thy fury upon the hidden that know thee not, and upon the family that do not call on your name. He said, God, pour out your anger upon the family that show one of the battles that we need to fight. If you must enter into rest, is the battle against prayerlessness. Why is it that? Because the Bible said we should strive we should labor therefore to enter into that rest. Jesus has died, though. He has paid the price. And he has said, come unto me, all you that labor, and I will give you rest. How do you come? You come by prayer. So if you are not praying, how can you enter into rest? If you are not prayerful, how can you obtain that rest? 
let us be very truthful to ourselves. There is nothing of value in this world. There is nothing of value in this world that is free of charge. Nothing of significant value that you that, 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 that is a cost for it. If you have not paid for it, somebody else somewhere has paid it for you. Salvation, even as free as salvation is, you still need to repent to get saved. If you don't repent, you can't be saved. If you don't call on the name of the Lord and call him Lord, save me, you can't be saved. That is a price for everything that is of value. To enter into his rest, he said we should strive, we should labor, we should pray to enter. So that is the battle against prayerlessness. You must pray even when you don't feel like praying. When you are prayerless, you are at the risk of God's anger. And you are also open to satanic wickedness. Wage wars against prayerlessness. It is the only activity Satan cannot do. The devil can sing in the church. The devil can preach. He preached a sermon to Jesus. If that be a son of God, command that this stone be made bread. For he has said he will give his angels charge over you. The devil quoted the scripture. The devil preached the gospel. The devil knows all of these things. The only thing he cannot do is to pray. Why? Because Jesus said, when you pray, say, our father. You have a father, I have a father. And Jesus said, when we are praying, we should say our father, but the devil cannot call God my father. So Satan cannot pray. So the only thing the devil cannot do is to pray. And he will do everything to make sure that you as a child of God, you are not praying. So be very, very eager. Battle. Speak. Fire against prayerlessness. Wage wars against prayerlessness. Because when you begin to see small troubles, it's an evidence that you are not praying. Because while men slept in prayerlessness, the enemy came and sowed tears. What he sowed were tears. And he sowed them as a seed. They didn't manifest. But after one year, after a few weeks, those tears, they became weeds. They began to manifest. And you begin to think, where are these little serpents coming from? Problems grow when they are not killed in prayers. The small serpent of today, you don't kill. Tomorrow, it will become a python. And if you still delay, you don't kill it. By the time it is one year, that python will become a dragon. It will be you, a prayer you would have prayed that would have taken you 10 minutes to cancel. You will now need to do 21 day prayer and fasting to kill a dragon. You don't need that. Men ought always to pray and not to faint. There is power in prayer. The times that we use in complaining and crying tears, use that time in aggressive prayer. Use it in aggressive warfare. God is not moved by our tears. God is not moved by our emotions. God is not moved by our feelings. No, God is moved by the prayers we pray in alignment to the covenant of his word. And that is what God is going to hear. You can cry if you want to cry. It's okay if that will relieve you. But as you are crying, make sure you are saying something. Make sure you are praying. Make sure you are crying out to God. And in that tears, God will answer you in Jesus' name. <coughs> Amen. So that is the first battle you need to pray. And that's one of the prayers you are going to pray. As you take the Holy Communion today, pray, Lord, as I take this communion, let the energy that is in the blood, let the fire that is in the blood, let it enter into my life. Let that be a revival in my prayer life. Let that be a revival in my spirituality. And the Lord will do it. The second battle you need to buy to fight is the battle for open doors. Battle for open doors. What the apostle said in 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verse 9, he said, for a great door is opened unto me. A great door and effectual is opened unto me. But there are many adversaries. There are adversaries that will not allow you to enter into your open doors. You need open doors to assess rest. If you're outside the door, you can't sleep inside the room. You can't rest inside the room. You need to enter into the room to rest. That's why you need to pray the prayer of open doors. We pray this prayer at the end of every month. If you have noticed the way we pray, that at the end of every month, we must pray, Lord, let the moon, let the door 
of that month be opened. Let the doors of opportunity, we keep praying it. Why? Because it takes the doors to be opened for you to assess what is inside the room. You need to open doors to assess what is inside for your rest. No matter what belongs to you in the treasure house, if the doors to that treasure house or if the gates to that treasure door is closed, there will be no access and therefore there will be no rest. Doors are barriers. That There are barriers of entrance. There are barriers to our entrance and, and there are also barriers to our exit. You need certain doors to be opened to assess your rest. Uh, because of our time, I would like us to pray some prayers. And as we pray this night, believe God. God is going to come through for you. Heaven is going to tear open. And the angels of God will ascend. They are descending. And they are coming with your package. Every door that needs to be opened tonight, the Lord will tear them open. And you will enter into your divine rest. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Okay. In two minutes, we are going to start praying. In two minutes, we are going to start praying. But before then, I want you to understand that the first covenant you need to make is to enter into a covenant relationship with God. So if you're on this platform and you are not yet born again, you're on this platform, you were born again before, but now you are not sure. You need to rededicate your life to Christ. It's a long time you have prayed. You used to pray two hours before, but now it is difficult to even pray 30 minutes. It is difficult to even pray 10 minutes. You sleep, you wake up, you go your way, no prayer. And God is pointing at you. You need revival. You need to rededicate your life to God. Or you are not even born again. Or you were born again before, but now you are backsliding. You are backsliding. I want to give us the first one or two minutes to come to God and say, Lord, I surrender my life to you. I don't want to be part of the God. God is not obligated to enter into a covenant with someone who has no relationship with him. It will not work. Covenant is on the basis of a relationship. It's on the basis of an agreement. Until your time is fulfilled, God is not committed to confirm that covenant. You must do your part. And your part is to come to him. Jesus said, come unto me. It's a call for salvation. It's a call for service. It's a call for surrender. It is a call to make Jesus your director. The Lord, I am coming today. I surrender my life to you. I enter into a new covenant relationship with you. I give you my life. I give you my love. I surrender all. So wherever we are now, I want us to take some time and let's begin to pray. Wherever you are now, let's begin to pray. Begin to call upon the name of the Lord. Say, Lord, I have mercy upon me. Have mercy upon me. Men has failed me in time past, but today I come, I come before you tonight, because you are the God of I the everlasting covenant. Have mercy upon me, Lord. Have mercy upon me. Have mercy upon me, Lord. Have mercy upon me. Any unrighteousness in my life, Father, Father, bless me, Father, bless me. In the name of Jesus, the King, the Lord, Jesus, man, I am the Lord. I want you to search your life now. 
and ask God, Lord, anywhere I've fallen short of your glory, have mercy on me. Reconnect me back to your glory. Reconnect me back to the covenant of the cross. Reconnect me back to Jesus. Anywhere I have fallen short of your glory, anywhere my prayer life has died, anywhere I have failed you, I have disappointed you because of my wrong addiction, because this is the time to make it clear, to make your ways clear with God. Make your ways right with God. In the name of Jesus, let's Amen. fire that prayer. Let's fire my that prayer. My calm is in the name This is my life, Lord. Any we are not a fully shot of your glory. Any we are not a fully shot of your mercy. Any we are not. Any we are any we are not. In my disposition, I have mercy upon you. I have mercy upon you. I have mercy upon you. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Okay. Now you are going to pray a prayer for yourself. Say, Lord, as I pray now, enter into a particular covenant with me. Let me enter. Open the doors of your part of a particular covenant walk with you. You mentioned the covenant you want God to enter into with you. Last night, we were praying together. This same prayer was what I raised. We were about 10 or 11 of us. Immediately, the brother that was in that prayer meeting, he had the voice of God telling him, I've entered into... When I told him, that, he wrote it down. Why he was telling me, the Lord just confirmed it that this is my covenant with him. Powerful. So I want you now, you have the opportunity now, you have the opportunity now to enter into a covenant relationship with God. We are coming into that of divine rest, but I want you now to pray and say, Lord, as I am praying now, open your unique door of covenant, particularly to me. Open a unique door of covenant, a covenant of divine health, a covenant of long life, a covenant of, uh, a, a covenant of peace, that God, you are taking over my battles. Any covenant you want God to enter into with you, open your mouth now and tell God, Father, open your unique door of covenant. Please take it very seriously. It is the covenant work that changes the life of a man. 
It is the covenant work of Abraham that made him who he is. Your covenant platform, in fact, the covenant is the platform for every spiritual relationship that God enters into with man. Your relationship only assumes spirituality on the platform of the covenant. What are you going to hand over to the next generation? God's relationship with Israel was on the basis of covenant. The Bible said, and God had their groaning, and God remembered his covenant with Abraham, with Isaac, and with Jacob. Your emotion and how you feel doesn't move God. It is your covenant with him that moves him. This is your opportunity. We are going to pray now. Father, I don't want to walk with you as an ordinary believer. I don't want to walk with you as an ordinary Christian. I don't want to walk as an ordinary man. Lord, as I am praying now, enter a new covenant with me, a particularly new covenant with me. Enter with me, oh God, into a particular covenant that will define my life, that will define my generation. In the name of Jesus, open your mouth and fire. Lord, I don't want to be an ordinary person. I don't want to be an ordinary person. I don't want to walk away. I don't want to walk away. I don't want to walk away. Good night, Lord. I am asking in the name of Jesus. Open up to me, O God. Your unique God, Lord, is particularly to me, Lord. In the name of Jesus, Amen. I can hear the Lord. Say, I should tell his people. Listen to me now. I can hear the Lord say, Tell my people, for the rest of this year, if your mouth will not say the wrong thing and your hand will not touch the wrong thing, I will bless you. Amen. So you are going to pray now. If your mouth will not say the wrong thing and your hand will not touch the wrong thing, he said, I will bless you. For the remainder of this year, it's a covenant. God has spoken it. Let's prove him and see if you will do it or not. You are going to pray now. Father, I receive that covenant. I receive this agreement on this altar by the blood of Jesus. Father, do as you have said. The grace not to say the wrong thing. The grace not to touch the wrong thing. Give unto me in the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and fire me, sir. Amen. So, those words look very easy, but as you are praying, I'm thinking about it. It means you should not say the wrong word. Don't confess the wrong thing. Don't backbite the wrong people. Don't backbite at all. Don't say it's impossible. Say the right word. If you will not say the wrong thing and your hand will not touch the wrong thing, you will not sign four signatures. You will not um, you will not uh, collect bribes. You will not give bribes. If your hand will not touch the wrong thing and your mouth will say the right thing, he said, I will bless you. It came very strongly. And the Lord cannot fail. If what he has said he will do, that is what he's going to do. I want to help us. I want you to pray. I'm also going to pray for myself. You are going to pray covenant keeping God. Help me to be faithful to you. 
Help me to be faithful to you for the rest of this year. For the rest of my life, help me to be faithful. Help me not to say the wrong thing. Help me not to touch the wrong thing. And then bless me, Lord. In the name of Jesus, open your mouth. Fire prayer. Open your mouth. Fire prayer. Mama, Mama, I will not say the wrong thing, Lord. Bless me, Lord. You are the covenant with me, Lord. It will be faithful to you. It will be faithful to you. now before we do our covenant proclamation i would like us to counsel pray any covenant that is not of God, that is linked to my life. Any evil covenant, any wrong covenant, any covenant with darkness that is linked to my life, that is linked to my family, as I am praying now, Break in the name of Jesus. Open your mouth. Try your prayer. Covenant with darkness. Covenant with darkness. Covenant with Wonderful. Now that we have broken that covenant, if you look at your screen, we want to do a covenant proclamation that will take us and bring us into God's divine rest. Remember, we are read to Ross earlier. The Bible said in Genesis chapter 8, verse 4, and the ark rested in the seventh month. There was turbulence everywhere. There was turmoil. There was storm. There was chaos everywhere before the seventh month. And we are on this seventh month. There are inputs without output, bodies without relief, stress without rest, ministry without impact. There was job, there was no money. Yes, you had money, but there is nothing to buy. Money has lost its buying power. Until the seventh month, and on the 17th day, today is 17th day of the seventh month, the Bible said the ark rested. 
we are entering into that covenant of rest. Based on Genesis 8, 4, on the same day the ark rested, Jesus is the ark of the New Testament. And by his blood and by the communion we are entering into today, by the power of the Holy Ghost, we are entering into the covenant of divine rest with God in Jesus' name. Amen. So I want you to get ready now. We are going to proclaim this covenant and then we will take our Lord's Supper. We will take our communion table. Okay. You are going to speak. You are going to say, I, and then you mention your name. I, today and now, through the blood of Jesus, I come to this exalted daughter of the Lord. I believe Jesus is the Son of God. Well, let me just read it out. I believe Jesus is the Son of God. I believe he died and rose again from, my, from the dead for my justification. I confess him as Lord over my life and family. Through his blood and this communion table, we will take the communion table after. I now enter into a covenant of rest and a covenant of sure mercies with God. With God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost. And then we say, in Jesus' name, I declare that I now walk. I live in divine rest. I live in divine favor. And I live in divine mercy. I have preferential treatment. I have supernatural increase, restorations, prominence. My petitions are granted. Laws are changed. Policies and rules are changed. Battles are won and wars have ceased. All because of the blessings of rest, favor, and mercy of God upon my life. Powerful proclamation. These are some of the things I did myself before now. And God has used it to bless a lot of us. So this night, it's, your, it's our own night. Every one of us, we are going to be blessed by it in Jesus' name. So Amen. please, I would like you to say after me, I. 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 Then you will mention your name. I. Henry, I. I. Henry, I. Like I. Today and now. Today, Today and, now. and now. Through the blood of Jesus. Through the blood, the blood of, Jesus. of Jesus. I come to the exalted altar of the Lord. I, I come to the Lord, 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 Lord. Lord. I believe Jesus is the Son of God. I believe Jesus is the Son of God. I believe He died and rose again from the dead. I believe He died and rose again from the dead, from the dead. From the dead. for my, my justification. For my justification. justification. I confess Him as Lord. I confess, I confess Him as Lord, Lord. Lord over my life and family. Over my, over my life, life and my family. And my family. Through His blood. Through his blood. blood and the communion table we are taking tonight, and the, and the communion table, table we are taking tonight, I now enter. I now enter into a covenant of rest. Into a covenant of rest. I show mercies. I show mercies with God the Father. With God the Father. With God the Son. With God, with God the Son, Son and with God the Holy Ghost. And with God, God the Holy, Holy Ghost. Ghost. In the name of Jesus. In, in the name, name of Jesus. Jesus. I now declare. I, I now declare. declare. I walk. I, I walk. And I live. And I live. My rest. In the divine rest. In the divine rest. Divine favor. Divine mercy. Divine mercy. Now onwards. From now onwards, I have preferential treatment. I have, I have preferential treatment. Supernatural increase. I have supernatural increase. I have restorations. I have, I have restorations. restorations. I have prominence. I have prominence. My petitions are granted. My petitions are granted. Are granted. Laws are changed. Laws are changed. changed. Policies and rules are changed. Policies and rules are changed. My battles are won. My, my battles are won. And every war against me has ceased. And every war against me has ceased. Me has ceased. All because of the blessings of rest. All oh, because of the blessings of rest. Blessings of, rest. Blessings of favor. Blessings of favor. Mercy and favor. Mercy of God upon my life. And mercy of God upon my life. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Worship God, begin to thank God in the name of Jesus. Father, I said, I have a covenant of Christ. 
Wonderful. Father, I pray that tonight you will visit your people. Even in their dreams, give them an evidence. Father, Lord, that you have taken over their battles. Father, tonight, give them an evidence that everyone has entered into your covenant of divine rest. Confirm it in the name of Jesus. And that if the blood of bulls and of goats could sanctify the unclean, how much more with the blood of Jesus which was shared with that spot, how much more with that blood and true faith in that blood, Father Lord, not bring us, O God, into divine. Lord Jesus, you said we should come unto you. All that have been restless, all that have been laboring, all that are heavy laden, Father Lord, with sickness, with infirmity, with yoke, so God, with oppression and captivity. Father, we come just as we are, with all the troubles of life, with all the storms, so God, of the enemy. Father, we come unto you because you have commanded us, and in obedience, Father Lord, we have come. I have brought your people and I've led them. Father Lord, into covenant relationship with you. Father, as a sign, confirm it now and deliver your people in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Let the battle against them be terminated. Let Amen. the warfare cease tonight in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. The fibroid, multiple fibroids, multiple fibroids. By this covenant, clear the way. Go in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Melted, let it go. Let it be melted. Let it go. Let it be destroyed. Let it be no more. In the name of Jesus. Amen. The person that is having the migraine headache and the thing has been troubling you for so many years. I command that migraine headache to cease now. By the reason of the covenant, in the name of Jesus, go in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. And the person that you have been challenged, you have no job. You have a degree. You have nothing to show for it. Going back home is an issue for you. 
and there's a lady here. You have just finished your, you finished your youth service some time ago. There is nothing. You have paid to get, nobody's coming. No job. You are struggling. You are managing. You are at the moment you are even sporting with someone. And the thing is putting you into a state. You have considered it. Should I go and do what other ladies are doing? As a result of this covenant, the Lord has taken care of you. Before the end of July, the Lord is going to come to for you. You too, you will know that this is the hand of God. Father, confirm it in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. As a result of this covenant, Father, let there be promotions without interview. In Amen. the name of Jesus. And let there be a job opportunities without interviews. Amen. Amen. Jesus. Amen. Father, Amen. what only you can do. Confirm Amen. it and glorify your name. Thank Amen. you, Father, because it is done. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name, I have prayed. Amen. Amen. Okay, because of our time, we are going to do our loss, our loss supper very, very quickly. Very, very quickly. And then we'll pray the last prayer. So please bring out your communion elements as we pray on them and as we go into the Lord's Supper now. They bring out your communion elements as we pray on them. What the apostle says, for I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. On the night when he was betrayed, when he was betrayed, the Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks. He broke it and he said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he also took the cup and said, this is the cup, the new covenant established by my blood. That's exactly what we are doing today and established covenant by the blood of Jesus. He told them, said, this is my cup. This cup is the new covenant that is established and ratified by my blood. Do this as often as you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. We are going to take the Lord's Supper. By the grace of God, all of us have prayed. Through this Lord's Supper, you'll be healed in the name of Jesus. Amen. Through this Lord's Supper, the very life of God, that restores human dignity and destiny. We enter into your lives in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Jesus said in John chapter 6, verse 51, he said, I am the bread of life. I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever. The bread that I shall give is my flesh, which I shall give for the life of the world. And on the last supper, on the Lord, he, he brought them together. He broke bread. When he brought the bread, he broke it. He gave thanks in Luke chapter 22, in verse 19. And the Bible said he gave it unto them. It was bread he gave them. But when he gave them the bread, he told them, he said, this is no longer bread. He said, this is my body, which is given for you. This is my body, which is given. Don't come to the Lord's Supper with an ordinary mentality. Don't come with the mentality that it is just and not know. Those that took it unworthily died. You want to take it with full assurance of faith. That though it is bread on the table, but as we pray, we give thanks. As we eat, this is my body. According to the word of God. People go to witch doctors to collect things that look like chalk. That collect things that are cowries that have no power in them, that have no life in them, and they believe that how much more when we come to the one that we call the lost table, how much more will it not work for you? How much more will it not work for you? We have received a lot of, lot of, lot of testimonies on the lost supper. Some of them, we have read them out here. This night, the Lord is going to do another one. So please bring out your lost supper elements as I pray on them now. Father, I thank you because unto you is the gathering of the people. Father, we are doing this by your command because you said, as often as we do this, we show your death to God and the deliverance of the Lord. Father, tonight, in your mercy, by your blood, by your spirit, let every loss of our element 
Let every communion element, Father Lord, that is before your people, let it now be sanctified in the name of Jesus. Amen. Father, let it be purged by your mercy, by your blood, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Father, Amen. I pray that it will no longer become an ordinary thing. Today, Amen. as we eat this bread, let it become the body of Christ. As Amen. we drink this wine, let it become the blood of Jesus. Amen. Father, for the purpose for which it is taken, let there be signs and wonders. Amen. Let there be miracles. Let there Amen. be testimonies. Amen. Amen. Holy Ghost, let your fire enter into this element. Let Amen. them be turned around. Let them Amen. become supernatural. Heal Amen. your people. Deliver them from oppression. Let every poison dry up. Anything that is not of God living in your body. As you end this, I command that they be expelled in the name of Jesus. Amen. Father, do it, Lord, and let your name be glorified. Let there be revival. Give your people multiplied testimonies. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. Amen. Amen. Okay. We are going to take together now in unity. So you are going to take the bread. Jesus said, the Bible said, and he took bread and he gave thanks. He broke it and he gave unto them, saying, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. You can take the bread now, you can eat. Okay, we'll also take the wine. In the same way after supper, he also took the cup and he said, this cup, this cup is the new covenant established by my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the lost death until he comes. You can drink now. Let's begin to worship God. Begin to pray now. If you have done that, please begin to pray now. Begin to pray. And tell God that I'm going to eat this again with you at the marriage supper of the Lamb. Anything that is not of God in my life, let it be washed away. In the name of Jesus, let's begin to pray. Now. Let Anything that is not in my life, Manta Cabracataria, Amen. So please, in one minute, you are going to proclaim, by this communion, I receive new strength. I escape out of the snare of the fowler. By this communion, I am healed in Jesus' name. Hey, Every Baba. member of my family is delivered. By begin to speak now, begin to pray. By this communion, Christ is boosted in me. By the reason of this communion, I am Whatever I lay my hands upon, I have my portion. 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 I stand in the dark, I 
Amen. I want to pray for you now. Father, by this communion, I decree and I declare that from today, let the life of Christ be boosted in our lives in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. By this communion, we stand in the gap for our families. We stand in the gap for our marriage. We stand in the gap for our spouses. That from because of this communion and because of the covenant we have entered into, tonight we begin to enjoy divine health. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Anything that is not of God in our systems, anything that is not of God in our body, because we are taking this communion, I command they will pass out through urination. They will pass out through defecation. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Father, by this communion, we receive enhanced wisdom. We receive enhanced knowledge. We receive enhanced understanding. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Father, I pray by this communion, we receive uncommon favor. We receive Amen. unusual access. We Amen. receive unusual breakthroughs. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. By this communion, I speak into your life. Receive the fruit of the womb. Amen. In the name Amen. of Jesus. Amen. 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 Receive new jobs. Receive Amen. Amen. Receive freshness. Amen. Amen. Jesus. Amen. 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 By this communion, I command that every trouble in your mind dies now. In the Amen. mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Communion, receive fresh ideas. Amen. It will have fortification. Amen. In Amen. the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. By this communion, let there be prosperity. Amen. Let there be marital sentiment. Let Amen. there be joy and gladness. Let Amen. it be the communion of divine rest and testimony. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Father, because it is done. Amen. Glory Thank to you, Lord Lord. Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, I have prayed. Amen. 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 Just thank God. Let's take 30 seconds. Let's just worship oh, God. Father, we give you praise. Father, we thank you for what you have done. We are grateful. We are thankful. We are not taking you for granted. We appreciate you, Lord. We appreciate you, Lord. We honor you, Lord. We adore you, Lord. And we adore you, Lord. Thank you. 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 Thank you, thank you. The grace to walk in this covenant to God, we receive in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, for everything. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Amen. Amen. Tonight, as you go to sleep, you will sleep and you wake up in peace in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And you wake up with testimonies in the Amen. name of Jesus. Amen. No people from the gates you shall prosper. Every tongue that rises up against you in judgment is condemned. In Amen. the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. I pray that the blessing that the Lord has given you tonight will be permanent in your life. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Father, because it is done. I declare Thank that you. this week will be a week of testimonies, it Amen. will be a week of divine rest. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus, this is not permitted to end until you have carried your evidence. Thank Amen. you, Father, Amen. because it's done. In Amen. Jesus' mighty name, I have prayed. Amen. 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 Brethren, we appreciate you. God bless you so much for this session. And I pray that all that God has done in your life is done for you in the mighty is, is confirmed in the name of Jesus. Nobody will Amen. take you. You will share your testimony in the Amen. mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Amen.